Amid Tehran's holiday homes by the snowy roadside is where the man whose work Iran says must go on was fatally shot, reportedly in front of his wife. Nuclear scientist Dr. Mohsin Fakhrizadeh was Iran's repository of nuclear bomb knowledge, Israel has claimed, while not saying they were behind the assassination. A lot of the debris is being cleared away here, but you can still see the soot from the explosion on the curb and the damage done to the road below me. There are still so many different versions of the events of what happened here, but one witness we've spoken to says at first they heard an explosion, a wood truck, they say, that detonated here. And then there was an exchange of gunfire that lasted about eight to ten minutes. You can see over here the damage still done to the side by the bullets. From the orchard nearby, possible vantage point for a low-tech ambush, even though Iranian security officials are telling state media this was a high-tech plot involving an AI-powered facial recognition satellite-controlled robot machine gun into whose bullets Fakhrizadeh stepped when he got out of his bulletproof car. One of the many reasons offered for a lapse in security in this neat backwater. Fakhrizadeh's son told state media his father ignored warnings from his security detail the day before. My father said he had a class, the son says, one he could not teach virtually and an important meeting, so they could not persuade him to turn back. <laughs> Deep inside the Defence Ministry Sunday, they remembered him again at the highest levels. Among Iran's critics, louder and louder the question, does this, another lapse in security, make a race towards a possible nuclear weapon a good idea or a worse one? Officially, Iran says it does not want the bomb, but its parliament last week demanded Iran enrich uranium to 20% in the first weeks of the Biden administration. That could make a weapon a lot closer. Yet there remain two versions of Iran, both a bit visible here. It's hard hit by sanctions and wants to talk, or has resisted and will hit back. We know our campaign is working because now the Iranians are desperately signaling their willingness to return to the negotiating table to get sanctions relief. The Israeli regime, if it feels that it can continue carrying out acts of terror, Iranians will pay an unnecessary price. The only way to stop these acts of terror is for them to pay a price that makes it not worthy. I have no doubt that the Iranians are going to respond. Iran has been here before a lot, as this museum of blown up cars attests all Peugeot models going back in the ages, all nuclear scientists assassinated in Iran's pursuit of what it says is peaceful nuclear technology that it needs alongside its huge oil reserves. We may never know what knowledge perished with Dr. Fakhrizadeh or what impact that will have on Iran's critics, the Hawks, who claim that it could be as little as four months away from a possible nuclear weapon. Deals, scientists, assassins, all have come and gone, but the mounting tension, which Joe Biden has a huge diplomatic task to ease in a matter of months, has about 40 days left to build.